All right, so a little update on my pond while I'm out here, and I'm still able to update you before another major catastrophe rain comes in and does all kinds of damage. I just want to show you the eggs from the frogs that are here. Either they're, they're eggs from the frogs or they're eggs from uh, toads, but I'm pretty sure these are frogs. You can see the mother frog is right there. I think that's right there. I can't see in the camera here. They hide real good. Plus, there it is. It's in frame. That's the mother. She's she's watching me right now. <laughs> and she's also watching all the eggs in here. You could see the thousands upon thousands of eggs that are laid and strewn all across the... Uh, the branches here that's another one of the reasons why I like to leave some of this stuff in here because the frogs will uh, make their habitat in these leaves and everything and later eggs and all so that's kind of an important thing but in probably about a week most of that's going to hatch and this place is going to literally fill up with those little we call them mud puppies up here but they're probably gonna fill up with those tadpoles mud puppies whatever you want to call them uh, by the thousands my fish are going to have a feast galore. Uh, they will eat so many of those things that they just get to a point where they don't actually eat them anymore because they're just trying to digest a couple of hundred of them. So they win by sheer numbers, the frogs. The amount of tadpoles and everything they lay is just incredible. But there's probably, I've had or somewhere around Oh, I don't know, about six mating pairs in here I've seen. So, there's quite a few of them in here. And there's also a bunch of these younger frogs in here. If I can just find you one. It's not too hard to locate. I think in this frame here, I can't see it on the camera, but I think somewhere in here you'll see one just kind of hanging out. I think that's him right there. It's just hanging out there. And there's a bunch of others. And so some people were kind of upset. They seen that one dead frog in my last uh, winter kind of update. And one died and some of my fish died and all. It's amazing how the pond can just recuperate itself. And just kind of bring itself back to life. Now I'm hoping that my fish reproduce but uh, there's no guarantee they're going to this year so it, I, it's it's very environmentally sensitive so it needs to be the right conditions the right amount of rain and stuff like that and then they'll go into that breeding frenzy and they'll start to multiply but it looks like most of the little fish died all the little baby ones that were in here i mean you'll see a couple in here randomly There are some other things that come up and swim around in the leaves. I've seen them myself. I don't know what they are. I'm assuming they're baby fish, maybe. Who knows? I've put in so many different kinds of fish in here throughout the years that maybe some of the other species had lived. So it could be something like that. It could be a Helgramite or dragonfly larvae or who knows, you know. But things will live out here. They'll make life for themselves and reproduce and slowly survive. But yeah, there's probably about, out of 20 goldfish, I'd say there's probably only about a dozen left, I think, somewhere. You'll only see probably maybe a half dozen at a time. There's another frog. But it's still early in the season, so yeah, the water's still kind of murky. I mean, I I gotta clean this filter. This is this thing's a little bit of a pain in the neck to do because of what I have to do to to clean it and everything. But it's very effective. It will purify the water quite pure if you take the time out to clean out the sand and all that. And you get all the mud that's clogging. Right now, it's overflowing because it's clogged with you know mud and 
and other debris and stuff. So yeah, I got to get in there and clean it. It's just another one of those tasks I could add to my list. But yeah, the the fish are out, and uh, so some of them did survive, and they're gonna get even bigger this year. I think as the fish get bigger, the less hardy ones will die off. They won't be able to take the colder weather, eat enough food for the winter and things like that. Like I say, I'm not worried about it because the damage from the heavy rains that come in and I'm just, you know, I'm not going to keep up with it and I'm selling the house. and So this isn't going to be my problem very soon, you know, within the next couple years anyway. But it's fun to watch. Oh, there's a frog. Where are you? A nice big one right in here somewhere. Where are you? Look at that big one. That's one of the mating mothers. Nice and green. She's looking at me. There's frogs all over here. You just can't see them. Here's another one over there. There's that one there. I can't see. There's one right there. And they're around. They're in the rocks and stuff. Believe it or not, they also come up on the land to sunbathe and stuff. So they're probably up on here. You just can't see them. You can see them on film afterwards. I can't see them out here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the eggs and and uh, and stuff while I can actually. I may buy a couple of dollars worth of those rosies, those little uh, rosy fish. I may buy a few dollars more of those because they're like, it's like 10 for a dollar or something of those things. So I may buy, um, you know, a dollar or two more of the rosies and put them here because the rosies are excellent insect feeders. They get into all these little tight spaces and they really do eat the mosquitoes a lot. Probably more efficient on eating mosquito larvae than the big old fish so you kind of need both sizes if you're trying to control mosquitoes and other insects that lay their eggs and stuff in water so yeah you definitely want to have those rosies in here or some kind of minnow or herring or something like that those little shiners and those fish are very very good feeders but yeah you can really see those eggs down there I'll just I'm gonna pan I can't see what's in there but Kind of just follow the branches. They're all over the branches over there. All right, they're all in that thing. Everywhere on there. Especially right there. You could probably see them. But the fish ain't eating the eggs for some reason. But once they start hatching, they will eat the fry and the, uh, the small tadpoles and stuff. Like I say, that's not a problem because there's going to literally be thousands. Of, I'll show it to you once they spawn and they crack open and they'll be all over the edges. It'll look like I sprinkled black pepper in here, you know? Literally be hundreds of them. Yeah, I'm kind of sad about losing some of the baby fish that I raised just to die off like that. It was kind of disappointing. But, you know, that's part of, the, part of the life, part of how, you know, I wanted to study how this was going to actually survive. And so you got to be willing to deal with that, you know. Now, if it wasn't for the water that was pouring in here from, from these heavy rains and dragging all this mud, and if it wasn't for that, I would probably not have a problem at all. But that really is something that's... It's a big problem, and I'm not willing to put that much effort and energy into it to actually change that. There's really not much I can do about it. And the majority of the water comes from, on the other side of the property, there's a culvert up at the top that catches the water off the roads. So that, who knows, what's that's dragging down the hill. It could be, you know, pollution from the automobiles, the salt from the roads. God knows what it's dragging down here. So, it's just one of those circumstances. If I would have known that, I probably would have done things a lot differently. I probably, instead of me putting my, you know, had put my pond here, behind the greenhouse, I should have put my garden here. 
and extended it out further and put my pond more between my grapevine trellises and what is known as the pond now. The pond would just be where the garden is right now. So I probably would have done that. I, I would have done a lot of things differently. Unfortunately, it's way too late for that now. And uh, uh, the next time I do something like this, the, the planning board will definitely be more planned out a lot better because now I know what can be a problem doing something like this. When you're designing a pond, you have to take all these other things into consideration. You got to study the geographics. How is the water going to affect it? Is there flooding that comes down there? What kind of wildlife it comes around there? All these little things you got to definitely take into consideration. So now I'm I'm very leery of it now. I'm you know I I've got my feet wet so to speak. No pun intended. The next place is going to be designed a lot differently. I'm going to make it really nice, but that's not until way in the future. So, but if you decide to do a pond. At least you get an idea of some of the problems you can encounter, especially if you're going to do a pond on a hill like I did here. This was actually a challenge that, honestly, I didn't think would probably even really do too good. Now, the ideal place for this pond would have been under, underneath the trees over there, where that, that little stall area I use as a, to pile up the leaves in the winter in there with the, um, the skids. Now clear all those skids out of there and dig a nice big hole in there and put it. But the problem with that is just the roots. I would have never been able to dig that by hand. I dug this with a shovel, this hole. And I'll tell you, that took me about three or four days to do that. And I was hurting after that. Whereas if I was to try to do that down at the back of my property over there by the skids, I would have never been able to get past the roots. The roots over there are so bad, so thick. You can't even drive a metal spike into that area. <laughs> it's, it, you are not getting through that, at least not without a, a backhoe or some kind of a machine to cut a, cut a hole in there. And God knows what that would have done to the trees and whatnot like that. So I didn't really want to... Though that would have been the ideal area to have the pond, though. Ultimately. Because it's flat right there. And, oh, yeah, water does come around it. It does flow past there quite a bit but you can build a berm like I did here you know build a big high berm like that and the water ain't going to get in there the water's only getting in here because it's coming in there's no way I can berm this off from the water behind it it comes in underneath these blocks and everything there's no way to completely stop it so yeah that's uh that's part of the problems you're going to deal with if you decide to put a pond on a hill. That's some of the things you're gonna have to deal with. All right, anyway, that's enough of my rambling. I just wanted to show you the frogs and the eggs and just do a little pond talk here. I don't know how many more of these I can get before it gets devastated again. Look at all the, all the, look at all the goldfish up there. What do we got? Two, four, six, eight, nine. See, I see nine. I know I got about 12 left. So some of them stay deep. What is that? Three, six, nine, 11. There's 11 up here right now. But yeah, there's about 12 left. I only see one one uh, Rosie that comes up. She's like the last of the Rosies right there. My last one. So yeah, I got to get a few more of them. Get them in here. Get them breeding. Yeah, it's looking good. As long as if it doesn't flood, it'll be fine. It's the flooding part that's really throwing everything out of commission for me. I don't know. Not much else to say about it other than to give you the updates on it and whatnot like that. But anyways, I guess I'll leave you with that. And I'll leave you with Oscar right there. Say bye-bye, Oscar. <laughs> I think that's you can see that I can't see it on my screen say bye bye alright I'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.